Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. My name is Josh, Amateur Radio Call Sign KI6NAZ. Today I'm going again back to kind of a beginner video. I figured since I've got a specific radio with me right now that I might talk about tuners, specifically manual tuners. You know, we, we mention automatic tuners a lot, but there's a lot going for a manual tuner. So today I'm going to show you how to use a manual antenna tuner. A couple of things to note about a manual antenna tuner is you're going to have to adjust them as you change bands, uh, just like an automatic would as well, but you're obviously going to go hands-on with it. They're also generally far cheaper, and with them, some of the larger ones that look like would sit on your desk or whatnot will actually have a wider impedance match that you can do. So you can take something that's way, way out of match and, and bring it in with the manual tuner. There are diehard enthusiasts of manual tuners and they won't work with automatic tuners at all. And there's good reasons for it. Uh, a lot of it is they're just not that difficult to use and they can be effective and they can be acquired very cheaply and easily. All right, here is the MFJ pocket tuner. Most tuners are gonna look something like this. There'll be a control for inductance, and this is a multi-tapped switch, basically. And then there'll be two potentiometers that you can control for antenna and transmitter. There'll be a port in, antenna in, and a port out for the transmitter. In and out is, is relative, of course, you understand. Tune and bypass. Bypass just treats this as a bypass. It just connect, makes the connection between these two ports, and you're done. Tune, however, allows these controls to be, come into play. So let's go ahead and connect the radio. So I've got my antenna connected. This is an N-fed, and here's the line that goes to the radio down here. All right, so I have it on A for inductance and 0, 0 for transmitter. And what I'm going to do is let me just show you the reaction. Don't mess with any of the antenna transmitter controls yet. Just cycle through the inductance. Watch the noise floor creep up as we start to hop around. Keep an eye on the S-meter here and the pan adapter or the spectrum scope, whatever you want to call it. And there it drops down again when you hit B. So we've got some high points. I would say D is probably the highest with E being close second, F, and then it starts dropping down again. So what you're aiming for is you're aiming for the highest noise floor. So let's, let's go back to A just for the heck of it. I'm in AM mode. You can do this with a CW mode with a straight key and you just hold it down and let's see what the reading is. So it says 9 to 1 SWR, so that's pretty bad. Let's go to D, and we'll check again. Not touching these controls yet. 1.8 to 1. So we've already knocked down a huge amount of the standing wave ratio, the match misconnect, if you will, the mismatch between the antenna and the transmitter just by getting the inductance on D. So you can sort out most of your problems just by looking at your S meter and adjusting it appropriately. But let's fine tune it. So I'm not going to really mess with the antenna. We're just going to, I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like to mess with it. So 1.8, watch what happens when I adjust the antenna. SWR climbs. So we don't want to do that. Instead, let's go to the transmitter and adjust it. And it's dropping. And right there. 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 to 1. We just tuned the antenna. Well, let me be specific. We're not tuning the antenna. We're not tuning anything this box is creating a match between the mismatch of the antenna and the 50 ohms that this radio expects. That's what this box does. It just creates a 50 ohm uh, impedance so that the radio can put out all the power into this box and, and have it go out of the antenna. That's really what it's doing. All right, here's another way to display this. I want to mention this while we're looking at these devices. You don't want to be keying up putting out RF out of your antenna, going into the tuner while modifying or adjusting inductance. Don't do that, <laughs> okay, don't do that. Instead, if you're, if you're unsure about the noise floor, the other thing you can do is just rotate the inductance once, click it, and then check the SWR. 2.2, not bad. Let's go back to where we were on, which is G. 1.3 to one, you see that? Right there, very low. So that's all you really have to do to get kind of a fine check. Just work your way through the inductance and check the SWR. There you go, 1.3. Let's see if we can do a little bit better with this. Let's go in there and adjust it some. So 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 
Now, there we go, one to one. So we were able to drop that down to a one to one match, setting the inductance to G on this tuner, and then given a little bit of adjustment on the transmitter side. Remember, don't adjust this while you're keyed up. Don't do that, you could damage the tuner. A Couple of things to note here, this MFJ940, it'll go all the way up to 300 watts uh, to match. That's, that's really good, this is an inexpensive tuner. Very small because it's, it's all manual. You don't need the automatic control to be able to adjust the matching network inside. And this is just a push button thing and I fed it with 12 volt power supply, but you don't have to, it just lights up when you don't have it. Anyway, that's pretty much how it works. Manual tuner is pretty simple. So that's it for me today. Please post in the comments your thoughts about manual antenna tuners. Do you use a manual antenna tuner? Are you potentially going to pick one up to do whatever activations or radio fun you have planned? We have a couple of radios coming out here not too soon with the TX500 and obviously the ICOM IC705 that don't have an internal tuner. So you may be looking at something like an automatic tuner. Well, manual tuners can also fill that role and they do so relatively cheaply. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts. I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up on this video. If you have not already, please subscribe. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and I'll talk to you later. See ya. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you give the video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a wonderful Discord and Facebook. You can find links to all of those things down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya.